The other day, I witnessed a roller player using Respawn Punisher in solo queue. And it made me realize that a lot of people don't understand the viable use cases for that gear perk. I knew a roller shouldn't be running Respawn Punisher, because you need to not only have a high number of splats, but also a low number of deaths. A roller is good at getting splats, but not so good at staying alive once it commits for them, so it's a bad candidate. But I didn't know exactly how well you had to do to get value from it, so I pulled up Splatoon Wiki and did some math to answer the question of exactly how well you have to do to get value out of Respawn Punisher. To start with, let's talk about what Respawn Punisher does. If you're wearing Respawn Punisher and you splat someone, your opponent will respawn slower and lose more of their special gauge because they got splatted. There is a major important downside to this, which is that if you, the Respawn Punisher user, are splatted, you respawn even slower than they will and lose even more of your special gauge. Specifically, and I pray to the flying spaghetti monster this information is up to date for current patch, because so many of these numbers depend on that. When you're not wearing Respawn Punisher, you respawn in 8.5 seconds, ignoring effects like Quick Respawn or Tacticooler. When you are wearing Respawn Punisher and you splat someone who isn't, they respawn in 9.25 seconds. If you're wearing Respawn Punisher and someone who isn't splats you, you respawn in 9.67 seconds. It's worse if someone wearing Respawn Punisher splats you while you're also wearing Respawn Punisher, but I didn't do any calculations based on that number, since that's not a common scenario, and I'm not going to bog you down with more things to remember. In terms of your special meter, normally you lose 50% of it, but if a Respawn Punisher user splats someone without it, they lose 65%. And if a Respawn Punisher user is splatted by a non-user, they lose 72.5%. Again, Respawn Punisher on Respawn Punisher splats are more punishing still, and again, I haven't bothered with doing those calculations. This is enough information for us to calculate what needs to happen for you to get value from using Respawn Punisher against opponents who aren't using it. Respawn Punisher triggers when someone splats someone else or when you're splatted. So to cover all of the possible outcomes, we need to look at both the number of splats you get and the number of times you get splatted. What's important to remember is that this is splats, not assists. Assists do not trigger Respawn Punisher. This means that the number you see on the end screen is not the number that we need to decide whether it was worth it or not because that number is your splats plus your assists added together. To get the actual number here, the one that's counted for the enemy splatter medal, you'd need to look at the number of assists you got in the game on the Nintendo Switch Online app and subtract them from your KA. Once you have that number and the number of times you got splatted, I have a chart you can refer to which will show whether running Respawn Punisher benefited you or made the game harder for you. The numbers in the chart show how much uptime you gained by using Respawn Punisher in comparison to not using Respawn Punisher. In more detail, this is the amount of time you made your opponents spend respawning, minus the amount of time you spent respawning, minus that same calculation, time they spent splatted minus time you spent respawning, if you hadn't run Respawn Punisher. So this is a comparison between using it and not using it. Any positive number means that Respawn Punisher outperforms not using Respawn Punisher in that situation, where a zero would mean they gained and lost exactly the same amount of time. The colors change from dark red at negative five seconds or worse, to light red from zero to negative five, to light blue at zero to five, and dark blue from five and up. Five is a pretty arbitrary number that doesn't necessarily imply some important threshold, but it splits the chart up pretty nicely, and I think it looks cool. I leave it up to the viewer what threshold you think you'd really want for Respawn Punisher to be worth using over other gear perks. This chart only shows what you would get from wearing Respawn Punisher versus running nothing at all. Is it worth the opportunity cost? Again, I leave that up to you. You'll remember that Respawn Time is only one of the two effects of Respawn Punisher, and that the other is how much it decreases the opponent's special gauge, and your special gauge when you splat each other. 
I could, in theory, make a similar chart like this for special charge. In practice, this took a really long time to put together, and having run the numbers in advance, every time the respawn time number is positive, the special charge number is also positive. And with one specific exception, every time the respawn time number is negative, the special charge number is also negative. The exception is that every time you have a ratio of 3 to 2, so 3 splats 2 deaths, 6 splats 4 deaths, 9 splats 6 deaths, etc., the respawn time is very slightly negative, so in favor of not running respawn punisher, while the special charge comparison is 0, completely even between the two. Just a weird quirk of how the math works out, I guess. But still, not worth running Respawn Punisher 4, so I think the chart is still all you really need to see. There are a few other niche factors that might make a difference. If the enemy team is running a lot of Quick Respawn gear or Special Saver, Respawn Punisher decreases the effect of the Quick Respawn by 85%, and the Special Saver by 30%. If you have a read on an opponent's gear choices and know that they'll be running this, that might give Respawn Punisher a boost in value. If you fall out of bounds and get splatted that way, the Respawn Punisher will still take effect, diminishing your special charge, though not your respawn time, which, being out of bounds, is already faster than usual. If you're trapped, sure to be splatted, and you're near a ledge you can jump off, it might actually be advantageous to fall off instead of getting splatted and suffering the longer respawn time. But I think this chart gives a good general sense of how well you need to be doing for the perk to be worth it. There was a time when you'd also consider Respawn Punisher as a counter for Tacticooler in that it got rid of the fast respawn and full special saver perks that are a part of that special. But as of patch 2.1.0, that's no longer the case. So it isn't a part of the consideration of whether to use the gear perk or not. Now that we have these numbers to work with, let's do some analysis based on them. The thresholds you have to hit to get value out of Respawn Punisher are really pretty strict. A 12 and 6 game is a pretty successful one, two players splatted for every time you're splatted. But you only get an extra two seconds of uptime for that. Seconds are absolutely valuable in this game, but consider other gear that could have saved the same amount of time. If you'd run a main of swim speed up instead, would that alone not have saved you more than two seconds over the course of the game, maybe just from swimming back out to spawn, or from moving around the map for rotations quicker? It's definitely possible. To keep your ratio as positive as possible, you need to not only be splatting a lot of players, as many as possible really, but also never going down yourself. This rules out weapons that like to dive in and take trades. One for one doesn't cut it with this gear perk. Short of going 0-0, zero and zero, which is not helping your team, you're better off not having a main gear perk on your shirt than using Respawn Punisher if you're getting one splat for every time you're splatted. Another significant downside for some weapons is that you need to be the one to get the last hit on your opponent. If you chip the opponent for 85 damage with a Rapid Blaster direct, but then a teammate finishes the splat before you can fire another shot, you've only earned an assist your Respawn Punisher didn't activate, so this is a much better idea for weapons with one-shot potential. Between those two pretty strict conditions, competitive players have generally landed on only running this in one of two conditions. Either they're running something like an E-Leader, a very passive, safe backline weapon that shouldn't be getting splatted much at all and has one-shot potential and goes for a lot of splats, or they have a player on their team who's mechanically gifted and can just expect to get two or more confirmed splats, not assists, every time they go down. Even that second situation is pretty theoretically shaky. If you've got a player who's able to outcompete their opponents that consistently, do you really need the extra help of Respawn Punisher to keep sending them to spawn? Would you not be able to do the job better with the help of different gear like Swim Speed or Special Charge or Ink Efficiency? Those abilities will always reliably benefit you. They don't put the pressure on you to perform at a certain level, just to make the gear worth running at all. A fluky, unlucky performance by that one player won't turn their own gear against them. Competitively speaking, most weapons just don't run Respawn Punisher. You'll see it pretty universally on E-Leaders, some of the time on other backline weapons, like other backline chargers, tri-stringers, and hydras, because with good positioning, those weapons aren't expecting to get splatted very often and plan on having time to back up and keep themselves safe. But unless I'm missing something, I just don't see it being used anyplace else. 
For just about any other weapon, it will probably only help you against an opponent you can already beat easily, without the extra help. Other perks help you even against opponents you lose to, but Respawn Punisher demands that you already be outsplatting your opponent reliably before it gives you anything at all. If you've been running it before, and realize now that you probably shouldn't be, head over to sendu.ink slash builds and see what top players are actually running on that weapon. Try to figure out what their rationale must be so you make an informed decision, and then build for yourself based on what you want to do. But also knowing what limitations of your weapon the gear can help you with and what the best players in the game seem to value to support the way they play.